taken a while. All right. Directing. All right. We're official. Okay, we are officially live. Great. This idea came from a way to get to know your instructors and the HMA staff more. I mean, they're teaching us in class all the time, and some of us know some of their backgrounds, but not everybody does. So this was just kind of an informal get to know your HMA leaders, those kinds of things. Um, <laughs> Master Ian does not know what questions I'm going to ask him. Hello, sir. Um, so he's just fly flying by the seat of his pants. We've had some technical difficulties because we're doing online classes and this at the same time so <laughs> we love last minuteness we love it here you're you're muted okay, okay i'm unmuted all right good afternoon everybody <laughs> good afternoon. Oh my gosh. today's been fun <laughs> all right my, okay, my so we've got oh i'm sorry ma'am all right we've got let's see who all is joining us um 100 people got the higdens miss higden is watching miss hollenbeck dr jenkins boo um all right so as you guys have questions i'm going to be the one that um, helps moderate those and then um master cook and master ian are are going to kind of get to know master ian i guess <laughs> let's see how that works I don't know. I, I have 20 questions. You just need to come up with 20 answers. So. Oh, fantastic. All right. Oh, okay. So obviously your name is uh, Ian Schultz. Um, everybody knows you as Master Ian, but you do have a last name. Okay. And your belt rank in Taekwondo, sir? Uh, I'm a fourth degree black belt man. Yeah, soon to be fifth if we can get this quarantine stuff done. So. Hopefully. Most people know me as a brown belt. But. <laughs> yes. And why do we call you a brown belt, sir? Uh, my belt is incredibly faded. I've had it for a very long time and worked very hard. And uh, if you do that for long enough, sometimes your belt uh, changes to a lighter color. All right. From tying your belt on every day, multiple every day. eight yes. days a week. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> so everybody should inspire to have a brown belt then. So. And then what is your rank in judo, sir? Uh, I am a first degree black belt in judo and hapkido as well. Yeah. Um, and your HMA location where you normally train? But I'm a long martial arts instructor. I've taught at all of the HMAs. Um, I've studied and taught at all three HMAs for when we had them, HMA <laughs> Paducah and the old schools. So um, I consider myself a definitely a, a Huang's black belt, not just J Town, but uh, predominantly I teach there. So, so if you want instructions from Master Ian, you need, need to come and visit us at J-Town. So no, no problem. We're, we're a great location. Okay. How long have you been with HMA, sir? Uh, that, it'll be 19 years this year. So 18 and a half. We'll call it 18 and a half years. So um, long time. All right. And what got you involved with HMA? How did you learn about it? Uh, four letters. A-D-H-D, man. Um, I was an incredibly hyper child. Uh, my younger brother and I were both pretty rambunctious, as you well know, and as well Master Mimi well knows. Uh, we were pretty pretty crazy growing up, and my dad studied uh, in college and in high school uh, up in Detroit, Michigan, where he grew up. And um, instead of loading us down with medication, we decided to come to HMA and try and focus our energy a little more constructively. Um, and so we fell in love with it. Okay. So who is we? Explain who, who all is Black Belt along beside you. Of, yeah, a lot of people don't know because they haven't been on the mat in a long time, but my entire family is, is are Black Belts. Uh, my younger brother, he's a year and a half younger than I am, is a second degree Black Belt, and both of my parents as well are second degree Black Belts. Uh, they haven't been on the mat in a while due to work schedule and due to injury and due to laziness i don't know uh they just haven't <laughs> and if they're watching right now hopefully they're gonna get on the mat but um it's it was really great we trained for probably i'd say probably eight nine years together and it was really cool being able to do something with my parents uh you know we did the regular sports as kids football soccer basketball you know uh, boy scouts stuff like that it was things that our parents never really got to be involved with us but when we got on the mat, all four of us could do something together. So it was really cool. Uh, you'll see my parents around at championships, belt tests, things like that. Um, so it's really cool. 
Right. And what is their reason now for attending Belt Test, sir? They have another reason to be there. Yeah, my, when I say my entire family, I mean the whole thing. Uh, my son is five years old. He will be six in uh, five days. He will be six wow. in five days. April 23rd is his birthday. Um, and he is now a blue belt in Taekwondo. So they come to Belt Test to watch him. Um, and he is just... He's awesome. He's a little bundle of craziness and we love him and he's, he's doing a really great job at um, taking up the family name at Huang's Martial Arts. Right. Um, he, he's a lot like his father, <laughs> which is a good thing. Unfortunately for him, yes. <laughs> and yesterday I saw him, he was all upset that you cut his hair he, and he still has more hair than you though. But the, Whatever, <laughs> he's fine. He wasn't happy with that. Um, what is your profession, sir? Uh, well, I actually, on the side, I do martial arts and on the front and I do martial arts and on the back, I do martial arts. So it's, uh, it's pretty all long martial arts. I'm a full-time instructor. Um, it, my official title is a head instructor or, uh, and director of development. So I take care of, um, take care of a lot of things. There's a lot of things that get done on the back end, not just teaching classes. That's definitely what I'm passionate about. Uh, but there are a lot of vehicles that get taken care of at all three locations, as well as maintenance and things like that. Um, so this is my full-time job. I don't have any other side gigs or anything else. This is, I am fully committed to the, the, the way of Fong's. Great. What hobbies do you have? Uh, taekwondo and judo <laughs> are my hobbies. I really, I honestly don't have any hobbies. Like uh, you can ask my family when I'm at home, uh, if you find me on YouTube or if you look at my YouTube history, it's mostly Taekwondo videos. Uh, I like to watch Olympic sparring. Um, I like to watch Olympic judo sparring as well as training videos just to keep my mind fresh on uh, things that you can do. Um, other things that we do as a family, you know, we go to the playground and things like that with Damon. And, uh, you know, we like to go bowling, go on walks and things like that with the family. Um, but really my hobby has been Taekwondo my whole life and, and Judo my whole life. It's really, uh, I don't really do much else <laughs> to be quite honest. Any hidden talents that you have? I want to say Taekwondo and Judo, but I'm not, uh, <laughs> not the best at those either. Uh, any hidden talents? Probably not. Um, probably, uh, I don't know, music maybe. I can, I can read music. I can. I played music when I was a kid a little. Um, so being able to do that. I do speak un pequeño de español. Mm -hmm. um, un poco de español. Dr. Jesse and I talk uh, quite frequently in Spanish. Um, so I do speak a little bit, maybe 25% Spanish. You can also count to 10 in how many languages, sir, which impresses kids. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I didn't know we were going that route. Yeah. Um, I can count to 10, which is just kind of fun for me. I like to collect languages, uh, really only counting one through 10. I don't know much of, of the language otherwise. Uh, in English, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, and Mandarin. Um, so I'm working on right now uh, Arabic. I want to be able to uh, count one through 10 and say some basic things in Arabic as well. And that helps connect you to your students because the kids Absolutely. like to teach you something that they know that they know you don't. So that's yes. yeah. Right, right before this whole quarantine situation happened, um, we had some students at HMJ Town that were starting to teach me how to speak in one through ten in Arabic as well as Turkish too. So uh, the same family were were teaching me both. So I think it's just kind of fun and be able to you know uh, connect with those students and really learn something about their culture because there's a lot that you can learn from a culture through the learning of their language. Yeah, right. and, and kids are always wonderfully yeah. teaching adults. That oh, they absolutely. Like them, so. They're harder teachers than I am. You should have, uh, me learning German from uh, uh, the Gallo family a long time ago here at HMA East End. They, she was tough. She was, she was like very tough on my pronunciation. Right, right. Um, th this one's gonna be a difficult question for you, sir. How has HMA impacted your non-HMA life? Wow, what a huge question. That is, that's like out to here. Oh my gosh. Um, I, and I knew we were eventually going to come to this, I guess. Um, it, in every way, there, and there's no real, you guys who have been around for a while can start to understand this, but um, me being around for so long and being, and literally going through 
several stages of life. Uh, I was eight years old when I started. So I was a kid with my parents and then I was a teenager, uh, both with and without my parents training and directly under Grandmaster, directly under all my other instructors. Um, I've, I've learned a lot over the years and my personal life has changed just as much. Um, I don't really have, uh, <laughs> this might sound sad, but I don't really have any friends that aren't on the map. I don't, I'm not connected with anybody from school or like my out of town family, not too much. It's really eighth grade people. My family are people like Master Cook, uh, you know, people like Master Philip, which is Master Cook's uh, second son, youngest son. He's one of my best friends. Um, it, it's like my son calls him Uncle Philip. That's how close we are. Um, and it, it just really has changed. And it changes the way that I think about uh, what's going on around me, um, not just as a physical standpoint to where, you know, if I would need to use any martial arts training to protect me or my family, because um, that's something that's always on my mind. Call me paranoid if you want to, but it, it really is always on my mind being able to protect myself and my family. Um, but the people that I call my closest friends and my family are all Huang's people, um, you know, especially the Huang family uh, themselves, Grandmaster, Master Chun, and both Master Mimi and Sophia um, are very close to me. And I, I really, um, really appreciate them. Uh, everything that is in my personal life has been affected by Huang's. And you don't see any other face besides what you see here. So you're, if you're on the mat with me, if you and I are at a restaurant together, that's the same face. I don't change, I don't change my face between you know home and work and school and hanging out. You know, it, it, I'm just I'm just me all the time. Um, and it's uh, learning the humility, learning respect, learning discipline, learning control through uh, training with martial arts and training with a grandmaster really has changed everything. Like. <laughs> I could talk for two hours on that subject, but I don't think I don't think that's what the viewers are, are looking for right now. Yeah. Tell us some of your best HMA memories. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Well, okay. Let me open the scroll. The scroll is very large on that question. Okay. Um, well, okay. My yellow belt test is always stuck in my mind. Um, I um just like all of you guys all you guys who are black belts we all were color belts at one point a black belt is a white belt that never gave up um, and it really really sticks in my head i don't really remember my try lessons i don't really remember you know specific things from a lot of belts because it's been so long but my yellow belt test really really stuck out um and watching so the hma1 back in the day used to be about that big compared to any of the schools right now you could probably cut hma1 into a quarter of the mat and that's how big the school was when we started and we had probably 100 people testing for their yellow belts that day uh, maybe 120 people uh, so it was just huge there were so many people we were punching in the air and we were doing hma1 like this and we would step forward and punch and put and step back and punch and we had to do breaking in a line like a line drills and black belts will be in the front with stacks of boards, stacks of boards, stacks of boards. So that really, really stuck in my mind uh, in just the, the sheer amount of energy that was in that room at the time. And even only being a crazy eight-year-old, it was, it's still really stuck. Um, Master Mimi just hopped on. Do we have something? <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you. you Go you, ahead. If you want to. Okay, okay. 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 Um, Master Cook, can I jump in and just ask sure. some, uh, have him answer some questions? So we don't have many, many questions, but um, Ms. Hollenbeck is asking, were you Gabriel level crazy? <laughs> um, I don't know if I was ever Gabriel level crazy. Uh, you were I, worse. What? You were way worse. Especially yeah. when I was babysitting you eating your, yeah, that is fixing another... your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> yeah, that is I don't ever think I fixed that for you. No, I don't think um, so. All right, and then uh, she she mentioned that your teaching is a talent. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. And then, uh, and then I Dr. Think. Jenkins is asking, what is your ultimate goal with martial arts? <laughs> what is my ultimate goal with martial arts? Uh, well, to defeat Dr. Jenkins in a one-on-one -on -one battle, I think would be really the, the epitome <laughs> of my, no. I, roundhouse I kick competition? Round <laughs> 
Um, I, my ultimate goal with martial arts is really just to teach. I, I, I don't really pride myself on my techniques or anything like that. I, I don't find, I don't feel as though I am at the highest level of technique. Um, I'm always building on my own, but really my goal in martial arts is to share with others. Um, I really share Grandmaster's philosophy on being able to raise others to a higher level than I am. So I think coaching and teaching is really my, my ultimate goal. Okay, what is your favorite form? Oh, Tiger Yukjung, hands down. Favorite color belt form is Tiger Yukjung, hands down. Okay, Absolutely. that was one of my later questions, darn. <laughs> oh, oh. oh really? and then um, Ms. Hollenbeck is asking, what is your most challenging form? Hmm. Most challenging as in, it's hard for me to do, hard for me to remember. I don't know, I, I don't know if okay. I have any, at this point, I, even you say, even the high, the like the fifth and sixth level black belt forms, um, I'd probably say GTA for now, just because that's the one that I have had the least amount of practice with, <laughs> is, the, is the, the higher level ones. But color belt forms, honestly, once you do them a lot, you just don't. And really, the challenge is right now, as you guys know, we're doing online classes, doing them backwards uh has been really fun and really and not backwards but doing them in reverse so when you would normally go left i'm going right and that's been a really fun experience being able to uh try my knowledge of being able to do it uh, in reverse has been fun all right uh two more questions mr martin is asking do you enjoy going to other tournaments oh yes absolutely of course we um, Wong's is a big name in, in the U.S. Grandmaster Grandmaster Wong is is a big presence and a big name. Uh, so whenever we go anywhere and we're wearing this logo right here, you can see it. Uh, a lot of people they recognize us and they know what's coming. Um, so I love to be able to go there and see how uh, how Grandmaster has influenced their championships and how they run their stuff and really be able to go and see the impact that our grandmaster is having on a school that's not even his own. Um, and it's, it's kind of fun to work on that competition too. But you did hear me say that. <laughs> All right, we've got, what is your favorite kick from uh, Boo? Boo Jones. Hmm. Uh, I wanna say roundhouse kick because it's just, it's just the kick. Roundhouse kick is, it, you can do so many things with it, but probably she's probably looking for like a fancy kick. Jumping spinning back kick would probably be my 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 favorite. All Thank right, I'm gonna hop off here. Ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you guys for all of your questions. Sure. Um, what do you want students to learn from you? Mm. Wow. Okay. Um, I want them to learn a lot of things. Um, mostly I would love for them to learn from my mistakes and have them not have to go through it themselves, especially the teenagers. A lot of you guys know I have a, a special place in, in my heart for anybody between the ages of 13 and 19 in, in that age bracket, you know, are mostly our SWAT team kids. Uh, you know, right now it's Claire Subelman, Jackson Subelman, Dean, Francis Subelman, Dean, all those kinds of people. Um, it, I would love for them to see what I have gone through and be able to know that when they come out on the other side, they will be so much better because it's tough. Training here, training in any discipline is tough, but especially here. My master is very tough. We as instructors, Master Mimi, myself, Master Cook, we are all very tough instructors um, and it gets hard, but really that's the thing I want you to learn is if you don't give up, you will only come out on the other side better, no matter what. Because even if you don't succeed at something, if you give up, you will never succeed at anything. You have to persevere and you have to continue and you push and you push and you push. And when you start something, you just got to finish it no matter what, because on the other end of that, you're going to be better. And that's what I, true, what I truly believe and what I want people to learn from me. Not so much kicking and punching, but more up here. Um, do you have a style of teaching that you prefer? <laughs> uh, I think most of the kids at HMA1 would probably tell you that I am an aggressive teacher. I like to be 
I like to be, obviously I don't pound on anybody or anything like that, but I, I like a, a go, go, go style of teaching and a, you know, high energy, let's get it done. Let's do what you need to do. But at the same time, uh, I, I, they should not ever hesitate to ask questions. Um, I know sometimes when we are getting in the groove of things, it's kind of tough to stop, but um, I don't ever fault anybody for asking questions because if you don't and you just go with what you think is correct, it might not be. Um, and I did that a lot as a kid. I would just say, okay, oh, oh my God, oh, he's going to kill me if I ask a question right now. Uh, you know, you, you can't be afraid to do that. You don't hesitate to ask. Um, so I, I like to be able to push people uh, past their, just a little bit past their limits. Um, but um, yeah, I guess, I don't know. The only way to learn is to ask questions. Cause exactly. Right, ask, right, right. You're never going to learn the answer. So I would yeah. like to hear some of their answers to that question is my <laughs> teaching style. I want to hear what they say. To it. What do they say? Though? They're probably like, man, he's. <laughs> Um, HMA involvement, what other teams, what trips have you been on? Uh, okay, um, obviously. A team, a dream team captain, anything like that, sir. Okay, uh, no, you're fine. Uh, when I was a kid, dream team, demo team, right? Uh, we did all of the community events. So we used to, you know, Master Cook and I several times with my family, we went to Wayside and we swept the floors at Wayside Christian Mission. We gave out food. Uh, in the uh, in the luncheon and all that stuff we've done the highway pickup for I don't know 10 15 years something like that um, all kinds of different community events um, have been really great and being able to do that going on TV in the morning with Master Mimi and going downtown to WHAS or WDRB um, and being able to be on on live television or meeting meeting up with Keith Kaiser at 4 a.m. Um, for the Easter parade uh, stuff, things like that. I've been in all kinds of different parades, Easter parade, Halloween, St. Patrick's, New Year's. We, we did the big, you remember that? We froze to death that day. My, yeah. <laughs> but we were wearing gloves and long socks and everything underneath our uniforms. It was, we were freezing, but uh, that was really cool. Parades are a lot of fun. Uh, I've been to all of, all, like all the surrounding states, um, Ohio, Indiana, um, South Carolina for championships, uh, as well as we went to Alaska. I went to Alaska two years ago. Um, and Miami, Florida last summer, been to New York. We performed in Times Square in New York. Um, and then the big trip was in 2006. We went to, we went on the town in Korea trip uh, with Grandmaster. And that was the biggest trip that's ever gone master cook you were there as well there were 140 people on that trip all together it was huge um so we had four bus loads that anywhere we went there were four huge tour buses always with us uh, so it was a lot of fun being able to uh travel around and see grandmaster's home and uh, meet his family and we got to we got to have lunch at his brother's house that was really cool um, and do all kinds of fun stuff and beautiful, see the beautiful country and just uh, really be able to travel. Uh, HMA has, has done a lot for me travel wise. I'm kind of a homebody. I don't really, I don't really care if I travel anywhere. Um, HMA has definitely opened that up. Uh, being able to go to New York and stand on top of the Empire State Building at night was amazing. Like all seeing all the lights and being, I didn't really understand what city that never sleeps meant until we, it was 3 a.m. and we're looking out of our hotel and there's still thousands of people walking around in the streets. It's, uh, it was really amazing. What advice would you give children? Listen to your parents. That's my advice. Guys, come on. As a parent now of a young child, and, and you got to understand, we've been there. We've done that. Everything that you're going through, no matter what, we've been through it okay that's a that, listen to your parents listen to your coaches okay because that's we are really in it for you I consider myself a coach so kids need three areas of education I feel like from at home with their mom and dad at school with their teachers and from a coach somebody who is not part of the family somebody who is outside of school academics uh, a sports coach 
academic coach, uh, tutor, I don't know, something, somebody that's not a teacher or a parent, listen to us. We have your best interest at heart. And we know how far that you can push yourself. So really, that would be my advice is listen to your mom and dad. They, they know. They just know what's going on. Master Mimi, I think you just jumped in. Yes, Question for yes. me. All right. So we've got a lot of great comments. We've got uh, Ms. Heckman that is watching, Ms. Gray, Ms. Sarah. Uh, Mr. Braden says, this is great. And he also said, perseverance and self-confidence is what you are helping me relearn, Master Ian. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Braden. Dunn is also watching. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ms. Farah asks, which one do you think is harder, judo or taekwondo? Harder, uh, tougher on my body, definitely judo. It's definitely a, a, a tough workout. I think they're both similar in difficulty mentally. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that you can learn from both, especially when you get to a higher level. Um, but uh, when it comes to pure enjoyment, I love them both. I think it's great. Being able to spar, judo, taekwondo, being able to kick, being able to roll around, throw somebody. I love them both. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Miss Meadows is also watching and she says, mm -hmm. thanks for all you do. Thank you, ma'am. Noah's awesome. Okay. That's it. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> what advice would you give adults, sir? Ah, listen to your parents. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> for adults, uh, the main thing that I find myself telling adults when I'm teaching is to relax. You have to relax. As adults, uh, as parents especially, you've got your job, your parents, your spouse, your family, just everything weighing on your mind. Bills and bills and quarantine and COVID-19 and just, uh, it, it, it just wants to push you down and shove you down to the ground. When you come into the dojang, leave it at the door. Leave that stuff outside. You had a fight with the kids on, you had to fight with the kids at home because they weren't doing their homework. Leave it at the door. Your, your boss got after you for something that you didn't do or something that you had no control over. Leave it at the door. Your car's having problems. Leave it at the door. Get inside, work out, de-stress, relax. And then when you leave, you're going to have a clear head and be able to sort all that stuff out. I watched my parents go from heavy smokers, like, yeah. like pack a day, almost two pack a day smokers every day. Uh, and they would fight and we would be in the car and they would be yelling at each other. Sorry, mom and dad for filling the beans, but they would be in the car yelling at each other and yelling at us. And we would be yelling at each other, me and my brother, and we would be yelling at them and everybody would be yelling. And just, it was just terrible. And we would go inside the dojong, forget it work out, sweat, die a little because we've sweat so hard and worked out so hard. And we would leave forgetting why we were angry in the first place. You really have to just relax. And when you're learning something new, you guys already have a lifetime's worth of knowledge in your head. All the things you learned in school, all the things you learned in college, all the things you learned from your family, your work, your however many jobs you've had, whatever, you've already got a lot of knowledge in there. So it's hard to put more in, but I'm telling you, if you relax, especially right here, your shoulders, relax, chill out, take a deep breath. We're here for you. There's a whole, there's a reason why our black belt takes three years because if we gave it to you in a year, you wouldn't really be a black belt. It wouldn't be, you would not have learned anything. So really just take your time and ask questions. I'm here all the time. We have these super fancy things right here. You're more than welcome to shoot me a text. Facebook message me, call me, whatever. You have questions, ask. It's not a big deal. It's not a problem at all. We are here to help you guys. And what is your advice to the parents that are sitting on the cubbies on the sidelines? <laughs> that's wow. get off. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, uh, oh, wow. All right. That's a lot. That's, that's a big, big question. Parents on the side, my biggest advice to them would be to always encourage. And I know that sounds silly for me to say that because as a parent, you just are usually your that's a, a regular response that you have is to always encourage your children. But a lot of times, especially me, uh, we hold our kids up to a higher expectation because they're our kids. Oh, well, I get it. So he needs to get it. That kind of deal. 
Um, it's not like that. You don't, you might remember what it was to be five, six, seven, eight, 10, 15, 20 years old, but you're not that anymore. And you have to kind of not lower your expectations, but understand what their expectations are for your, for themselves and then meet in the middle. I would honestly, the parents talk to us, talk to the instructors on the mat. What do you think our kid needs to do to work better on this? We've been doing this for a long time. We have children that are doing this as well. So anything that you need advice wise to, uh, to help them be better at Taekwondo, we have exercises for you to be able to do at home. We have tools like the new videos that we put out that you can use at home. We have all kinds of things. And I, I am more than happy to level with kids and go, hey, what's going on? Like, what can I do to help you talk to your parents, communicate with your parents and that kind of thing. So really that would be my number one advice for parents is to always encourage. And sometimes encouragement means stepping back and going, hey, you've got this. Hey, Master Ian's got this. Hey, Master Mimi's got this. They've got you. you I, I trust you to learn from them. So sometimes that means to step back too. Uh, we've got a lot of parents that are very, uh, involved and they want to be involved and sometimes honestly that gets in the way they try and um, give advice from the sidelines and things like that maybe let's try that afterwards or get with us and let's make a game plan so that way there's there's good and even communication between instructors and students and same thing at school too mm -hmm. Thank wrapping you. up uh, you know, rapid fire questions what is your favorite food Korean food, obviously. <laughs> Any specific Korean food? Oh, um, I like yuke jang. Hot right. and spicy beef soup. Okay. Uh, your favorite color? Pink. Woo! Uh, your f favorite mu no, music genre? I can't talk. Favorite music? Oh, yeah. wow. That's so... Uh, of, <laughs> Master Mimi thinks I'm a rock and roll guy. I don't know. I, I, I don't really know if I have any favorite music genre. I like a lot. Of music uh sometimes. metallica metallica yeah I, and her sandman Woo! uh but honestly and i'm gonna sound like a huge nerd here but instead of listening to music in the car i generally listen to audiobooks i'm an audiobook kind of guy all right uh very quick question here uh mr gardner has tuned in mr siva miss mm -hmm. uh, gaither and he is asking what is it like to go from hma kid to hma adult good question Every, all these question. questions have been great. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it's it's a pretty big transition uh, going from being a kid to being an adult, but it's um, it's hard to explain because it, I, there was no break in between for me. It's been just kind of one smooth run all the way through. I think probably the biggest thing is um, the expectation of other people towards me. So like what my instructors saw and we're looking at me and expected of me as a kid versus what is expected of me now is is completely different i feel and that would probably be the biggest difference Wan june just tuned in as well woohoo Wan june good stuff thank you ma'am yes sir what is your favorite motto or favorite saying if you had a quote what would be the quote for master ian schultz wow um i know i don't it doesn't sound like it a lot, but my um, uh, my personal philosophy is speak softly and carry a big stick. A quote by uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Um, it's uh, it, it really carries with me. I don't speak softly. Uh, obviously, I'm a very loud person, but I think what it means is more of speak with thought. Speak with uh, with having put together what you're going to say before you say it and be able to back it up, no matter if it's in a confrontation or if it's in my work ethic or whatever. Um, I, I definitely find that speak softly and carry a big stick is my, my personal motto. What is your favorite sport besides Taekwondo? <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, it's funny. Uh, I, I don't, I don't. I got nothing. It, no. Favorite sport to play outside of Taekwondo and Judo would probably be football. 
Um, I, I'm a big dude. I like playing football. I, I played it a lot as a kid. That'd probably be it. Okay. Do you have a team that you follow? Not really uh, not a sports person. <laughs> whatever Miss Jennifer Stedman tells me to. And you can quote me on that. Uh, but as a kid, I grew up following uh, Pittsburgh Steelers for football um, and Detroit. Because dad, my dad is from Detroit. I was going to ask that, that question. Um, this one's already been asked. What was your favorite HMA form? And you said Yuk Jung. Yes, Yuk Jung. Tiger Yuk Jung is probably my favorite color form, yes. Okay. And uh, what is your favorite black belt philosophy? Ooh, that's a good one. Wow. Uh, I think uh, courtesy curriculum, the one that we're on right now, a winner sees an answer in every problem, a loser sees a problem in every answer. I think that would probably be my best, my, my most favorite, my most useful one. Uh, just because if you have a positive attitude, you will have a positive outcome. If you have a negative attitude, you will have a negative outcome, no matter what. Anything else you want to share with us? What else do, do we need to know about Ian Schultz? Um, I, I think a lot of the black belts are starting to get it. Uh, or they, if you're a first Don now, around your second Don, you'll start understanding. But being able to watch someone go from white belt to black belt is huge for me. I just really thinking about the fact that we were doing this interview, um, I, I really kind of put that, that thought together and in my head, I've been a part of a lot of black belt ceremonies since, since I got my black belt, we'll say since I got my second on, and I'm really the one that's helping people go from white to black and being able to stand next to them right before they walk forward to get their black belt is, is I'm getting goosebumps right now thinking about it. It's amazing to see people persevere and sweat and cry and sometimes bleed, unfortunately, and just really put their blood, sweat, and tears into this and, and push and push and push and do something that very few people on the earth, on the planet can say they've done. Right. Um, Grandmaster talks about the pyramid effect a lot. My yellow belt test, we had about 100 people testing for my yellow belt. Um, and then uh, when we got to black belt, the number was much lower. Uh, myself personally, I'm the only person of my belt rank around ever at all. There's no other fourth on with the same amount of experience as I uh, uh, the the same amount of Don anyway. I won't say experience. Uh, Master JC and I have been about about the same yearly rate um, as we go along, but it's really really cool being able to see people move from white to black, and it it just it fills me with pride. Uh, and it, and um, honestly, it brings tears to my eyes. I'll say it right now. As a, as a grown man, it brings tears to my eyes, being able to see somebody that I have personally trained and worked with and helped get from white to black. Really amazing. Master Mimi, do we have any other questions? No, ma'am. I, I um, not unless somebody wants to quickly chime in and ask questions about uh, um, Master Um, do you have any questions, Master Ian, ma'am? They're asking, no, they're no, asking, no. well, nobody's asking, but, um, yeah. who is Jen Stedman? Ah, <laughs> who is Jen Stedman? She is, uh, my significant other, love of my life, and most beautiful and amazing person on the planet, in my opinion. Oh. Love you, babe. She is, um, a black belt here at HMA East End, as well as her son. We, um, that's all. I mean, unless I start blushing, uh, she is uh, my other half, my better half, definitely. Okay, uh, Miss Ferris says your favorite memory of your martial arts. Um. Okay. Um. New York. I think the demo in New York was probably the coolest part. Um. As me as a martial artist and really showing skill, um, I think it was pretty cool. The crowd just going. Whoa, oh my God, like the entire crowd there. Uh, you can ask Ron Salomon or any of the guys that we went. Uh, it, it made me proud of myself being able to do that demo and make the whole crowd go, holy crap, that big dude really, oh man, so. This one's an interesting one. 
Mr. Gray wants to know if Master Ian is a sword, what kind of sword would he be? <laughs> <laughs> a big, ugly one with knots and notches and not very sharp, but it does the trick. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I'm not pretty to look at, but um, uh, I, I've been around the block a few times. I think. That's, that, that is very, very much a Mr. Gray kind of question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, looks like that's, looks like that is all the questions. All right. Thank nobody you, got very juicy. I was kind of encouraging juicy uh, questions, but nobody nobody sent any juicy. I don't know. They questions. probably already know. I'm nosy not. questions. <laughs> right. Any nosy questions? <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Well, um, before we go, I just wanted to thank uh, Master Mimi. You guys really need to give it up to her. She's she's been doing a whole lot in the last couple of weeks, uh, last couple of months, last couple of years, and really made this thing possible. Uh, thank you, Master Cook. This idea was great. Um, thank you for letting me be the first person to, to try out on this. Um, hopefully, I didn't make a fool out of myself. And, uh, oh, no, you did great. I think else. a lot of people really appreciate uh, getting to know you, especially on a personal level. Or in, you know, a lot of people see who you are at belt testings and events and everything, but some of the other students and families from the other schools. And that's kind of our goal is, hey, you know, yeah, you might see them at all of these events, but they're very interesting people once you get to know them. And so this is our, our big thing about um, kind of introducing you to the inside world of our black belts and, That's awesome. and our staff. That is a great idea. Thank you. No, I think it's awesome. And uh, really the background for me is wrong. That's all I got. So you guys will be. You, you <laughs> Maybe he much, wasn't a good first choice. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will get much more interesting uh, and uh, we'll call it juicy gossip from the other instructors because my whole <laughs> life has been here. Yeah. All right. It would be interesting to see how the instructors are so much alike and how different they are in their philosophies. So that's what I'm absolutely. Do we have do we have an announcement for who the next person is or do we want to keep that a secret? I, I know who it is. I already have another victim ready to go. So in two can you weeks. can you give can you give the one um Mr. Gardner is asking about the mosquito story. Stop. 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 No. no okay, now I'm he's not. blushing. Now no, he's blushing. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> the story is a, it's a grandmaster story. And anytime he tells it, I laugh so hard and he knows that I laugh so hard and he tells it on I think he tells it on purpose sometimes because he knows it's going to get a rise out of me but he's just talking about different uh people different why people. don't we why don't we p maybe yeah. pm you or dm yeah. you for the yeah, mosquito do that. story do that um can we can we reveal maybe to the live our live people that are watching can we reveal who the so next week saturday the 25th will be the uh, cooking mandu. with Master Sun. We're making mandu. mandu. And uh, then the weekend after that turns into May. Oh my gosh, already May 2nd? Yes, May 2nd? Yes, ma'am. Okay, do you want to reveal or did you want to do a special announcement? I figured we'd give our live, our 12 people watching. <laughs> the inside scoop it's a secret it's a secret he, he has two initials for a first name and hangs out a lot of times at hma okalona uh you see him at belt oh. uh opposite master mimi as an mc do we have any guesses yet <laughs> he's very very handsome he's also been around wongs for a long time too yeah. not the yeah. same as me yes so master jc williams is our next awesome the one that keeps us in line with our designs yes ma'am he's very awesome. creative <laughs> <laughs> all right perfect okay. well we hope everybody's enjoyed the the see you saturdays um with master <laughs> cook and it was master ian's idea great thoughts and um, that we can, um, you know, if there's anybody else in the pipeline, Master Cook kind of already has like an idea of who, I, who she's going to be interviewing over the next, I think we're going to make this, even if we come back into um, normalcy, I think doing things like this is fantastic. So, you know, our goal is to maybe have this throughout the rest of however long, but if there is anybody in specific, we can always boot Master JC off if there's people here that want to know about somebody else and we get you know maybe you can send a rose and you know maybe if i get at least five people with that 
bachelor rose and we can choose that person for um interviewing on may the second but we'll see i guess you know there's there's the grays there's Bren Sabonin. i mean there's so many people that uh, we would love to introduce you to and get for for having our families get to know so i'm really really excited about this so thank you master cook master ian uh, again, he's just doing a phenomenal job kind of being on the <laughs> Corona, the COVID-19. Uh, we'll call it the team, the, the disaster team relief team. That's just been just, you know, nonstop all day, every day. And, you know, and the fact that he's so willing to, to give his time and energy and, and um, just whatever struggles or anything that comes our way that we are able to handle this together. So thank you again, Master Ian, and again, Master Cook for, for everything and for being here and really kind of keeping this the group engaged uh, with HMA online because um, there's no way I could do that. So thank you very much, ma'am. <laughs> thank you, ma'am, for the opportunities. Okay. Right. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Bye. 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 See you later. High five. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.